Welcome to the final of this Rome Talk to War 2 vs 2 tournament. We are here at last. Um, so, who do we have playing? Now, of course, it's part, it continues on with the Discord team events and stuff. Um, so, if you want to be involved in future events, then just please do join my Discord. There's a Stronghold 2 event starting as well next week. Uh, we might still be needing sign-ups for that. Um, so just join my Discord if you want to be involved in that, and yeah, we'll, we might be able to get you a spot. Oh, by the way, for the Stronghold tournament, it has to be the Steam version of Stronghold 2. Not disc version, Steam version. Because that's the one I have, and I'll be spectating the matches like this. So, um, going on from the teams, who do we have? Well, it's just a coincidence that it's the Elves team. Versus the Elves team in the final. The Elves here clearly have a lot of good players because they've got uh, both of their teams into the final. So well done to them for that. Um, on this side here we have Arm Waffles. This is the guy who won the last tournament for Medieval 2. So he is clearly a good player. It's like small unit strain or something. Is it? No. Yeah, it kind of is. Um... Yeah, he's gone of course for the Skippy Eye, and his brought his uh, Urban Cohorts and the usual Rome Total to War Roman setup. Like four cavalry, four cohorts, four archers. Then over here we got his team member Arm Has, Arm Has 4, who has a Royal Pikeman unit, Cretans, Archers, and Archers. Where on earth is the rest of his army? Um, <laughs> um, okay, I can't find the rest of his army. Maybe he's just gone for super strong units. Uh, like these are like heavily upgraded or something. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully we... S <laughs> but we can't camouflage because we're spectating from Waffle's point of view. Since it's his team member, we should be able to see them. So he's, he's literally just gone for an army this small. Wow, okay. And it begins. Now it's interesting to see how far they've set back up. Ah, here we are. Here's Macedon's full army. There must have just, must have been a bug or something. So we got the companion cavalry here. Um, the general is actually a phalanx unit. Uh, four phalanxes and, ooh, they're swapping sides. And yeah, of course some more archers here. Uh, some Cretans as well. Oof, I was getting worried about I thought it was just me, tiny army. On this side, we have Eisenbard. Uh, playing on the other side of the Elves team, because each team submitted like two teams. It's just a coincidence to up against each other in the final. Um, well done to them both for making it this far. Uh, but there can only be one winner. So he's, of course, playing as a Brutti. Going for a slightly different tactic here. Uh, yeah, same stuff of four Praetorian cavalry, four urban cohorts, but he seems to have brought more archers. Yeah, I'm sh I swear the Skippy I brought four, he's bringing six. So maybe he's gone for cheaper ones or less on the upgrades. I don't know. I don't know what he's gone for. Over here we have the Egyptians. Um, another general as a phalanx unit. Uh, this is being played by Starkiller. I swear it's Eisenbard who has been playing as Egypt lately, and uh, Starkiller as Macedon. Yeah, because we spectated both of those battles, and this is the third battle we're spectating of them. So he's of course got his phalanxes, quite a lot of phalanxes, a lot of units, uh, some axemen over here, some more phalanxes, and the chariots. So, um, I'm going to call, what do I call the teams, right? I'm going to call these the arm, because they've both got arm in the name. They're part of some arm clan or something, I don't know. And then of course my Discord started an elbow clan. <laughs> Um, so yeah, arm versus, oh, what do we call these, um, Starbard, yeah, arm versus Starbard. <laughs> so Starbard has definitely got, um, gone for the more quantity type of troops, and um, arm has gone for the quality type of troops with less of them, but much stronger. I like how they've just swapped sides, like the Nova. Macedon's going to be better versus Egypt. That's what, yeah, that's why. Of course, um, they couldn't have Macedon um, as the usual strategy because, of course, um, Arm Has here has picked up Macedon himself, so he beat them to it. 
What does the winner take on? Well, the points don't really matter because the points go to the elves. I think it's 20 points for first place and 10 points for second place. Either way, the elves are getting 30 points out of this. <laughs> uh, but the individual prize is a copy of Hearts of Iron 3 uh, for Steam each. So yeah, Hearts of Iron 3 each for Steam for the winner. Who's going to take it? Oh, they're moving up so slowly. <laughs> Have the uh, Archer battle begun yet? No, no skirmish battles yet. I'm sure it'll begin eventually. Yeah, no one's shooting yet. This battle will eventually start. Oh, here we go. Ooh, they, they had a bit of a charge forward and then so did Macedon. The archers are coming in. Ooh, they're, they're marching forwards with their uh, uh, missile units. Maybe they didn't have a... Yeah, maybe they're out of range, so they had to pull forwards a bit. They took a few hits there, but it's all done in loose formation, so... They're not really going to lose that many archers. I think... The, the Skippy I actually have to be careful because archer wise they're outnumbered, so the Brutii yeah, here have a missile advantage. What's it like over here? But then Macedon has a missile advantage over here. Um, I know these are archers. No, mis missiles are basically the same on both sides here. Yeah, he hasn't gone from the Cretan archers, it's just normal archers. So, missiles are even here, but on this side, the Brutii yeah, have, have an advantage, so. Yeah, how are the Skippy I going to have to respond to this? And you can see because um, Starbard here has brought more troops that they're, they're able to encircle them a bit more. They've got the chariots all the way over there on the flank. They tried to bring some cavalry forwards but pulled them back. In come the Macedonian cavalry, the companion cavalry. Oh, it's like Alexander at Gorgamella all over again. Ooh, ooh, they didn't get the flanks down, but it pulled out. He's charging instead into the Desert Axeman. Alright, he's probably going to kill the Axeman, but the phalanxes, they need to get over there and deal with it. Uh, fast, yeah. He's, he doesn't like, he don't want to charge into the phalanxes. He's actually trying to pull them out. Uh, the Brutii have got their cavalry in. Um, it looks like it took a few losses, but it did more damage than it took. Yeah, his phalanxes were a bit all over the place, I think. Um, he's got his chariots over here. Now, what the Egyptian player has done in both of the battles here is use the chariots just to knock out the general uh, very early on. And that seems to have worked from That's what's gotten them this far. Um, so, they've got to defend their general quite well. Now, it's not a cavalry general they're up against. They're up against a phalanx general, which I think is going to be harder to take out. Uh, with the chariots, but maybe easier to take out um, in standard infantry battle. Okay, so the Skippy, they're marching forwards now. They've had enough of um, the Brutii yeah, having their missile advantage, so here we go. We're charging in. The javelins are thrown in. He's just an actual charging there, and the battle begins. This is his general, so he's got his general right on the front. Very risky there, but his cavalry's broken through. Get your cavalry in there. He lost a few archers to that. Ooh, that's going to be a morale hit on those. If he can get this cavalry unit here to hit the back of this urban cohort, he might be able to get one of them to break. The Brutii yeah, trying to bring in the cavalry reinforcements to chase them away. Yeah, they did charge into the back, but the Brutii yeah, got into the back of them. So, ooh. Oh, I was expecting the Skippy Eye Cavalry to break, but it was the Urban Cohorts who broke first. Oh, it's... the brute, Yeah, the Brutii Eye's Urban Cohorts broke before the Cavalry did. Ah, if, if the timing of that charge was different, I think this battle could have been completely different there. If they... If they got the Cavalry just, like, a few seconds before they charged into the back of the Brutii Eye's Urban Cohort, then... I think the cavalry would have broken because they would have been fighting on two fronts and not have gotten the charge um, advantage and then I think it could have actually collapsed for the skip PI and they had their general up on the front too so yeah that, that could have been their general killed and we'll be seeing we'll be seeing a completely different battle I think uh, but it looks like for now team arm has the advantage 
Yeah, the Brutes, yeah, are trying to get their general out of there, but I think it's too late. Eisenbad is done from this battle. Maybe try and sacrifice his troops to get his general killed, I think that's what he's doing here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Meanwhile, we can see over here, Egypt's doing uh, actually quite well against Macedon. Uh, the cavalry, they're controlling the cavalry quite well. Uh, they've, of course, taken a few losses, so they've still got all their chariots. The general's clearly safe. And yeah, Macedon, the phalanxes are. The phalanxes look a bit messy, but maybe they're just reforming them into a different position. But then over here, the Brutii completely annihilated. Near enough. And now they're going to go over here and help Macedon destroy the Egyptians. The chariots are coming in. What are we going to do with these chariots? Run over their own troops. <laughs> They've got to be careful with the chariots. So that's probably done with their main weapon here. The Brutii's general is still alive. <laughs> they haven't managed to bring him down yet. Oh, the cavalry almost caught the chariots in the back. Macedon managed to break through the broke out of phalanx to charge into the back of the phalanx and the cavalry There goes Brutii's general, but that doesn't really mean much Brutii gone. The cavalry made it round Noticing that there's no chariots to defend this flank. They're all the way over here. They're broken round with their companion cavalry and They could take out the archers, but I think they're actually gonna charge this way. Maybe. I don't know. The chariots looks like they're about to deal with a skippy eye. What are they gonna do? Or are they just gonna try and distract them with it? Oh, the chariots pulled out of that, but they knew that's not their fight. Oh, they lost a the chariot squad. They don't actually charge into the back of the phalanxes, but they put the phalanxes down. Ooh, it doesn't. Right, they didn't. They only lost one chariot. That could have gone really bad. Uh, Star Killer there got good timing. Yeah, just use your phalan just use your chariots, knock the phalanxes over, and yeah, then use your phalanxes and you'll have the advantage. Kill the Macedonian general, and then it just be Egypt versus Scipiai. That's what Starkiller needs to do right now. Uh, what Macedon needs to do, Macedon just needs to hold the ground, and as soon as I say that, they start collapsing, they've lost a lot of units there due to those chariots. And Macedon just needs to wait for the Scipiai to get here, which looks like the Scipiai has finally arrived with their troops. So it might just be too late for Starkiller right now. I think it's too late. I, I can't see what he can really do. Now he's got a lot of troops. I think he's actually probably still got numbers advantage. Oh, but his generals broke. One cavalry charge right into the back of the phalanx. And his general just like that broke. That's the end of the battle. That's when it became clear who has won this. Well done to the Arm Clan. Arm has four and Arm Waffles. Well done. They've, I've, I'm quite certain they've won it at this point. I can't see Egypt bringing it back. Uh, but well done to both Elven teams for making it into the final. Uh, they've scored a lot of points for their team, which we're going to actually calculate at the end of this episode. Um, but yeah, there we go. Egypt. They're done. They've got one unit left, I think. Two units left. Well done, sir. Arm has for and arm waffles. You will be both taking away a copy of Hearts of Iron 3. Not as exciting as Hearts of Iron 4, I know, but I don't have Hearts of Iron 4 to give away. I have I have two copies of Hearts of Iron 3 though, so that's why I put those into the prize pool. Um they can do with them whatever they want. Use them, give them away trade them for something else, sell them, whatever they want to do with the keys, it's up to them. But it's now there. They now have the keys. Um, unless Egypt makes the comeback of a lifetime. But <laughs> I can't see it happening. But well done to all the players, of course. Especially Eisenbad and Starkiller for making it into the final. And they did quite well, especially on the Egypt front. And they were doing well on the Skippy Eye front, but just uh, the timing messed them up a bit, I think. But yeah, Arm Waffles, two tournament wins in a row. He's, he's definitely looking scary, and that's a player that you need uh, with the Grand Finals. That's the type of player you need. 
Right, when we're done getting these stats. I've actually just done a chest for the rest of them down. I've... What's Egypt doing over here? Still trying to make the comeback, I like it. <laughs> Still playing. <laughs> and they're gone. It's a heroic victory as well, so Waffles got 650, Hans 4 got 505 kills, and yeah, we can see there, 374 and 250 kills. You can definitely see that, um, Star Bad there brought the most amount of troops, uh, but it seems like quality beat quantity, uh, troop-wise. Hope you've enjoyed, hope to see you in the next one, and... Not goodbye, because there's one more thing attached onto this video. There's an emblem design competition, or a logo design competition. And it's time to take a look at all the different emblems and decide which one is best. This competition took place on my Discord, and there's a few points we can win. It's just mostly for fun, but these emblems are actually going to become part of the new team system. I don't really like having the teams Mordor, Gondor, Elves and Dwarves. Um, it just doesn't feel right to be taking the Lord of the Rings ones. So what I've gone for is I've decided to create my own uh, with this. And these different teams are going to compete in the Season 2 of uh, my Discord tournament starting in January. The teams are as follows. Alexander's Companions, Attila's Horde, Caesar's Veterans, and Hannibal's Sacred Band. These four teams are going to be the four teams that continue uh, from January and onwards in my Discord. And yeah, if you're in those teams, you can take part in events. But we need emblems for those teams, and I decided let's make it into a bit of a competition, have a bit of fun with it. So let's go through all the different emblems that have been designed and see which one is the best. Now there was one small rule, and first of all it had to be circular, but the other one was the images had to be non-copyrightable, uh, so it had to be public domain images. Um, that was actually probably the main challenge of it, so they either, either had to find images they could use, or had permission to use, or create their own. And yeah, some of these images here you might think are actually copyright, but they've got evidence to say um, actually, it's not copyright, and they are fine to use this. Okay, let's start off basic. The Macedon flag for the team Alexander's Companions, named after his companion cavalry, and of course, Alexander the Great of Macedon. The team colour is purple. So what I want to see is something that represents either Alexander, Macedon, or his companion cavalry, and is purple, or has a lot of purple, and all these icons are actually very similar for Macedon, uh, but here we go, we got star colours here, very simple, I like it, and you've got to remember that this is going to be tiny as well, because it's also got to be an emoji, so it can't be too complex, right, so yeah, star colours submission here, I do like it, then we've got Dominion R's, and this one looks really good. I really like the three-dimensional look of it as well, um, how it pops out a bit, and the background, how it just all folds in. It looks really good. I really like this symbol. And then third, we have Amnestus here. Again, very good, very similar to the rest of them. And I like what he's done with the lighting as well. And here is all three, so... Now... It's got to be clear what it is, and I think Dominion does that best. Like, the, the purple is a very bold, dark purple, but it's surrounded, and the emblem inside it is of light colour, so it stands out. And, yeah, that's why I really like it. Whereas, Amnestus here, his... I like what he's done with the lighting, but it blurs the yellow and the purple a little bit too much, so the yellow icon does not stand out enough and star killers again like all of these emblems that you see i do really like i i will take um any of them but i've got to go with dominions it's just it's so much better three-dimensional well done dominion you've scored for elves five points 
Okay, now the next one is for the Huns, a Teller's Heart. This is the second team, and what Aim Nestus has gone for here is he's gone for, um, like the, is it an eagle? Yeah, I think it's an eagle that we're seeing Attila talk to Warbity. Um, he found a copy that I could use, and it's Attila's sword going down the middle. Now, I like what he's going for, um, but the team colour is yellow. Um, and this doesn't, this doesn't say yellow to me. It's black and white, and that's its main weakness. The fact that it's black and white. I don't really know how it could add yellow onto this. Maybe if he just made the background of it black, and then made the eagle yellow. I, I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's the lack of colour that is a thing that I don't like about this one. Next we have Star Killer. As it says, a very simple design for the Huns, which it is. Um, it's a Hunnic Eagle. Um, and yeah, it's definitely got the yellow right here, which I really like. But when I see it, I don't see Attila the Hun. What I actually see is the Holy Roman Empire, uh, because they had something very similar, and of course looking good is important, having the right colours is important, but it's got to be instantly recognisable as, yes, this is Attila, and I don't see Attila, but I do definitely like the design. Then we've got eyes and bards. Now it's not a circle because it couldn't crop the circle, but just imagine the yellow circle and the horse in the middle. Ignore the brown bit. And I do like this one. It's very simple. It's very clear what it is. And the black really stands out with the yellow, I think, as well. Um, missile cavalry, of course. That's that. Do I when I see this, I do see nomads, uh, which is what the Huns were. So, yeah, I can definitely see this being a tiller. It's got the yellow one there as well. I do really like it. And then here we have Dominions. Um, again, very good with the yellow. The issue here is that the eagle, although it looks really good, the eagle is also yellow and it blends in a bit too much with the yellow background. Well, the eagle's like a red yellow or a gold and... Yeah, it blends too much, so the eagle itself is not clear, but the rest of it I do really like. Overall, as soon as I saw this, I knew who the winner was, and it has to go to Eisenbad. Um, yeah, it's got the yellow, and it represents the Huns, and it's clear. And yeah, well done Eisenbad, you've scored for Elves another 5 points. Now, for Carthage, we have Hannibal's Sacred Band. Uh, that's the third team. And the team colour is white. I really like what Amnestus has done here. He's got the Carthage logo, a nice circular background going around it. Um, it's on a dark red background, which does really fit well with white. I do really like it. And yeah, overall, a very sharp, nice design. I really like this one. This, this is a really good one. And then over here, we've got Dominion R. And this is his Carthage design. Now, it's the same problem with the Huns one for Dominion here. Um, it's a silver background uh, on the shield, and the elephant is also silver. It doesn't, well, close enough to white, so I do like the colour, but it doesn't mould well into it uh, with the colours. I don't know what it could have done to actually make it better, because it does look really good, but I cannot, if you imagine it's smaller, you cannot see what it is because it's all the same colour, and that is going to be the main weakness. But overall, I do love this design, and the spears going through it as well. Problem is, with the spears, it's got to be circular, so those probably won't be shown on the, emo on the emoji. Or maybe, I, yeah, actually I could work them in. Oh, I really like this one. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? The winner for Carthage is going to go to Amnestus. This is going to be the winning one, but I'm also going to take this logo anyway and keep it as an emoji. I do like the look of it. Um, yeah, it's just so well done, but the only issue is that the colours don't work right. It's white on a white background, and you can see what it is here, but when it's smaller as an emoji, it's going to be difficult to see. But both of these submissions for Carthage were really good. And last but not least, we have Rome or Caesar's Veterans. 
This is the fourth and final team. Their colour is, of course, red. And, yeah. This is a Nestus design. Um, I do really like this one. It, it does show Rome very well. And there's not much to say. I, I'm not a fan of the writing, though. Julia, I'm not... I'm not a fan of that. It would have been better without that, I think. Then we have Eisenbard's image. Um, I can see what it was going for here with... I can see what it was going for here, but it's not... It's. I like the colours, but those colours won't appear in the circle. It's got to be circular, so the circle will actually go around the... What's it called? The, um, the leaves thing. I can't remember the name of it right now, but... The circle will go around that, so it won't have this weird blurring effect, which I really like. I like that blurring effect, but that won't be shown on the actual emblem because, um, yeah, it, it will be much more circular. And the fist looks more like a revolutionary sort of fist. Um, so yeah, th this one, it's not going to win, uh, but I do really like the colour, how it goes from red to white. And third, and the last emblem we're going to see is Dominion's. And this one is just beautiful. He's gone for that 3D effect again with uh, with the green leaves and he's got the yellow eagle in there for Rome, but it's also red. I do really like this one. Now, looking at both of these, the last two Roman ones, if Aimnestus, Aimnestus could have improved this without having that red banner going through it. If he removed the text, removed that red banner and it was just the yellow eagle, and the green going round it, I think that could win. But yeah, the text and the banner going through it, it's... I don't know, it, I think it takes away from it a little bit too much and yeah, that's why victory here is going to have to, is going to, have to go to Dominion R, scoring another five points. And yeah, it's got to be this one, it's got to be, I do like the design. Okay, so what you see here is the current score. Let's zoom in a bit. So the elves are on 18 points, and Mordor is on 8. Uh, Gondor is on 12, dwarves are on 3. I don't know why I went it down like that. Um, okay, so let's add up the tournament scores. Okay, so the elves came first and second place, which is actually plus 30 points if you add it up. Wow, that's... That's a lot of points. So, they've shot all the way up now to 48. Wow. Just like that, they've gone up to 48. That's why you got to get good players on your teams to win the tournaments. Now, each point actually only gives you a very small boost in the grand final, so... Um, it might be something like um, an extra 50 denarii per point in the grand final, for example. So, really... It might look like a massive difference, and it is definitely going to be a boost of the Dwarves, but a good Dwarves player can still win like the event, it's just they won't have a boost, and the Elves have, a, of course, a massive boost, but it's no guarantee they'll win. Now, on top of that, they also get plus one point per general killed. Now, I could be wrong with this, but actually, I don't know how many generals have been killed. Um... I'll look back at an update. I'm guessing they'll only, they'll only be about five points here, but yeah, I'll sort that out. So yeah, and if anyone, by the way, if anyone in the tournament knows, uh, was watching and counted how many generals were killed or can remember, please do let me know as it will speed this up a bit. Okay, now for the flags event, and it just gets even crazier um, because three members of the el two members of the elves. I uh, got three emblems through, so that's plus 15 points, plus 5 each. So what we have here is 48 plus 15 is 63. Just calculating that again in my head. Um, I have I have A-level mathematics on A-level further mathematics, but I've not counted in four years, so... <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course it is. 63, and then plus 5 points for Mordorf from Aim Nestus. So, ooh. Okay, then. So, Mordor has taken second place with the overall teams, and Gondor has been kicked down to third. But, you know, there's actually loads of points to give away. 
There's a single player event going on right now for 25 points. Um, there's Stronghold um, events about to start. There's a Stronghold 2 tournament about to start next week. There's going to be about another 20 points to win there. So quite easily if the Dwarves just happen to win that. And there's Hot Seat events going on as well. So overall that's like another... That's 100 points worth going on. So that the Dwarves could quite easily be like that. Um, in like two weeks time. Then there's of course future events. We've got a third age tournament coming up in November. And yes. Yeah, so overall there's a lot of stuff. Uh, just because the elves have a 50 point lead over Mordor. And a 60 point lead over the dwarves. It's not going to mean much once all the points are fully calculated. Because I do know the dwarves. I think they've scored quite a few points in the hot seats. So yeah they're done it. The dwarves are all hot seat players. So they're about to have a surge forward very soon. But they don't really have many tournament players, so uh, whatever. Hope you've enjoyed, and yeah, well done to the elves, of course, and goodbye.